Azric opened his eyes and found himself standing in a swift moving river. But instead of water, it looked like it was made entirely of liquid silver with an iridescent sheen. You have finally awakened, came a disembodied voice. From where? Azric could not tell. He spun around in a circle, looking for the source of the voice. Where are you? Show yourself! I am here, same as you are. Where am I? You are where you are supposed to be, where you need to be. Who are you? Who are you? The voice echoed. Is this some kind of game? Azric demanded. If it was, do you think you would be winning or losing? What are you? Azric shouted, growing impatient and angry at the voice's wordplay. What are you? I'm an orphan, a street rat, and a student of magic. Happy now? Are you happy? Which of those titles makes you happy? Titles are merely words, descriptors, not who or what you are. They do not define you. What am I, then, since you seem to have all the answers? The only answers I have are within you. What you are is what you choose to be. Are you... me? Are you my own voice? The voice of my mind? I am a part of you. A part you are just now beginning to discover. Whether I become you, you become me, or you become something else, is entirely up to you. You said I had awakened. What do you mean? I was in bed at the academy, so I must be asleep, not awake. Unless this is a hallucination. Azric argued. No, you are awake. For the first time in your life, you are awake. You are finally seeing clearly, seeing what is real. However, you must choose if you will stay awake, or go back to sleep, and live the life as the person you came here as. What will happen to me if I go back to sleep? You will be an orphan, street rat, and a student of magic. For a time. Azric realized the voice was talking in metaphors. He needed only to figure out the meaning. What happens to me if I stay awake? Who am I then? You will be what you are meant to be. What you need to be. What happens? Everything will happen. How do I stay awake? Touch the source. Let it fill you body and soul, and become one. Azric looked at the luminescent river and its swift-moving current flowing over the horizon. He listened to the rushing flow of energy for the first time and realized it was calling to him like the voice of a long-lost loved one. He heard his mother's and father's voices in the flow, inviting him to become part of it. It was beckoning him home. He walked slowly to its bank in an almost hypnotic state, he felt his feet slip into the edge of the flow. It was warm and comforting. He imagined this was what it felt like to be in a mother's womb, safe, loved, and protected. The river of energy flowed just above his waist as he trailed his hands in his sparkling current. The ground beneath his feet vanished, and Azric's head slipped under the roiling tide of energy as it swept him along its length. He fought for the surface and gasped for breath when his head broke through to the air above. He coughed out great mouthfuls of the prismatic substance before he was swept under again, pulled down deeper and deeper in its depths. He held his breath as long as he could and fought for the surface, but the source was not going to release its prize this time. It held him in its deep embrace until spots began to form and stars exploded in his vision. It was trying to kill him. It was a trick. He had tapped into power mortals were not supposed to touch, and he was going to pay for that sacrilege with his life. His starving lungs forced his mouth open, and he inhaled the source, taking in pure magical energy into his lungs, filling him and killing him. 